it's our flagship event of the year now. I mean, as publishers of Enterprise, a magazine for entrepreneurs, uh, we want to be seen to be doing our bit to recognise and applaud the success of entrepreneurs in the UK. Tonight we are here to celebrate the achievements of an exceptional group of people, the Enterprise 100 Entrepreneurs. Between them, and they tonight the Crunch is here celebrating the achievements of Pamela Ford, Events Manager Extraordinaire. There's about, in this room I'm in now, there's probably about 30 people. Sitting tables, building stages, sit, doing flowers. Pamela is the woman who's brought all this together. But what does pulling off an event like the Entrepreneur of the Year Award and dinner actually involve? There's high pressure, there's an unchangeable deadline, and there's a range of people to organise. After all, wealthy entrepreneurs are not the easiest of people to pin down. We'll be watching to see what skills Pamela has to call on to make the night a success. Sure. We'll see her planning ahead. Table 14 is London Business School. Communicating with a huge range of so, people. Ashley, Rob and Chris. You will um, catch people as they're coming in, basically. Delegating to the staff of Enterprise magazine. Get some magazine. So David will coordinate that. I'll leave that in his hands. Attending to all um, the little details. So, no, Chris and Rob, can you go and get the suits? Yes. Is that okay? How, what, everyone's loot? Yeah, right. ten of them. Because we need to iron the shirts tonight. <laughs> yes. <laughs> we either take them to the hotel and iron them in the hotel room tomorrow, which might be easier. And last but not least, so keeping an eye on the bigger picture. Oh, busy. It's quite good though. This is quite a buzzy time because everybody's got getting quite excited about it. I like that. Once they get jobs, they feel a bit of ownership, so it's, it's great. I like that. Let's take a look at the context of Pamela's work in the run-up to this big event. Martin Leach, himself a successful entrepreneur, knows a thing or two about setting up a business from nothing. So I started this company because I was really a bit of a maverick and I wasn't very employable. And really, the, the future for me was doing my own thing and I've been doing that now for the last 10 years running magazines and events. Being an entrepreneur it's very important that you have other people around you, your infrastructure to support what you do. It's okay to be passionate, it's okay to be dissatisfied but you can't do it on your own. You do need the support and help of your top team. It's been said that entrepreneurs are a different breed from managers. They're passionate risk takers who need steady staff to run their businesses day to day. This is exactly what Pamela does for Martin and why she's appreciated by him. Well, Pamela has been with the company now for eight months. She's still, she's still learning a lot, but she's, she's very fast on her feet. She's incredibly well organised. She lets me know what, what's happening all the time continually. She fits in very, very, very well into the business. Um, she's under pressure a lot. She has a lot of balls in the air at any one time, but she's very good at, at just a good outcome at the end of the day. And the event so far looks as if it's running very smoothly but only the next few days will tell. Well, the music on Thursday is going to be great. And mm. make it an event in itself, rather than just a boring old conference. Well, think about morning it. Who tea are we time. representing? We're representing entrepreneurs. Exactly. Yes. So we want an entrepreneurial <coughs> yeah. theme, don't yeah, we? Yeah, exactly. Which includes music and mm. the German action. Mm. And yeah. Energy. And energy yeah. and passion. Passion. <laughs> 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 Oh, I've got a list of at least a hundred things I'm worried about going wrong tomorrow. I think the um, the main ones are operational in that it is quite likely, and you've seen this going on, that some of the entrepreneurs we're expecting to get up on the stage and accept an award suddenly won't be there. They'll have made a last minute change. Now, we've tried to cover that as far as we can in the script and we'll be making changes right the way up until the end of today. But I just know some people will drop out. Unfortunately, successful entrepreneurs are unpredictable and have a different set of priorities than Pamela, which is causing quite a few problems. 
Um, this is um, two brothers, John and Brian Caldwell, who are number ninth equal on the list. Plus, they get an award as a regional winner for Midlands. So it's really key to get as many of these winners there on the night. And now we're hearing that they've just pulled out. And they can't make it. So I'm going to find out why. Give them a call right now. It's always a bit of a shame if you have a party and people decide they're not going to come at the last minute. And with this, we've built in these people into the into the show, which sounds quite straightforward, but you know it's been building a script around them and their photos and the, all the rest of it. Deborah, yeah. apparently the Cordles have just run to say that they can't make it. Brian and John Cordles? Yeah. Have they suggested anybody else? No. Um, Kate Arce, it's not... I need to give them a call. Hello Kelly, it's Pamela Ford here from Enterprise Magazine. Hi, have you just called Kate, have you? In regard to John attending the awards dinner on Thursday. Okay, um, just after a bit of background, are, they, are neither of them able to attend? Because they'll have quite a high profile on that night because um, they're actually winning two awards. And um, I was going to call you yesterday actually just to see if we wanted to split, you know, and John to have, go up and receive one and Brian to receive the other. So, um, you know, they have more than anyone else, they've got quite a profile on the night. But they're very busy people and I think it's the nature of entrepreneurs really that things come up and then you know they're off to Asia and they're off to Hong Kong and thank you okay thank you bye they're in a meeting so she's going to call back do they know they're getting two awards they do now all oh, right okay let's see if that makes a difference oh, so they don't get the award when they go up they get their award when they go up. For the boxes on it's got you. We, um, we do this event every year because our magazine, Enterprise, is all about celebrating the success of entrepreneurs in this country. We look at their sales turnover and their profits over five years. We look at how many jobs they've created in their organizations along the way. And this year, interestingly enough, there is 157,000 jobs in our top 100 entrepreneurs organizations and their combined sales turnover is in excess of 20 billion pounds. They're a very important part of the economy. So no wonder entrepreneurs are such tricky customers for Pamela. Despite the stresses they bring, she still has to keep her eye on the detail of the event. It's not just the who, but the when, what and where too. I don't know what kind of thing... Yes, yeah. exactly. No, you're on the I right track. previous year or anything. Have you photographed at the hotel before? Four Seasons No, hotel. I've never been to the Four Seasons. OK, no. let me just get a map of the, um, the rooms and we can okay. at least give you some orientation. OK. Right. Yeah, Linda was thinking there might be one good corner in one of the rooms. Yes, well, that's right. There's a sponsor's room where I want the main photo call for the first hour. It's quite small. It's very yellow. I tend to go, um, you know, here's the big idea, let's make it happen. And we'll go off and find sponsors yeah, and get people nice excited about nice. being involved in it. Yeah, and Pam is fabulous nice because she's got a real eye for detail. And as she will probably tell you, I start to glaze over when you get to what do the tablecloths look like and, you know, what are the flowers going to be like on the night, that sort of thing. And she's extremely good at planning things methodically and making sure that things happen when they should and that you know we're covering all the ground for the sponsors so I, I think we work quite well together although um, I'm probably a pain in the neck because I'm also um, I'll we run away and do something else and then come back and be a control freak and want to know everything that's going on so I'm sure I probably drive her up the wall on occasions but we have a very good working relationship um, she basically works best if I leave her to get on with it. There's a few things to be aware of I mean our sponsors need good photos and they need them with the top people so that's where we mm. need to get um, and you're going to brief them well to uh, if we're going back to the stage shots here to walk to centre of the stage and to look to the camera and because it all gets a bit kind of fumbly in those moments when people it are does. Their price. Pamela can't run the event by herself she needs a good team behind her people like Linda who's coordinating the photography keeping her team well motivated and on their toes is crucial 
So, claims direct have pulled out, have they? Yeah, they've pulled out. Yeah. Who talked? Yeah. You talked to him? Yeah. yeah. Okay. But don't worry about that because what's going to happen, those places, okay, have been filled up by these two. Yeah. Okay, and I've got two more this afternoon. Have okay, you? yeah, which I'm going to wrap up. Pamela keeps everyone in the communications loop. Here she is talking to Kate, her assistant, and Arthur, who sells tickets for the event. So, how are you good at that? What are the skills you've got? Um, I'm chirpy, cheerful, um, enthusiastic, never give up, never give up. Okay, if you give up, okay, you, you will never be a good uh, events executive. Um, I make people want to listen to you. You don't be pushy, you sell with panache. That's what it's all about. You've got to be on the phone and you talk to people and make them feel like they've known you for years, okay? So when you pick up a phone, okay, you say, oh, hi, my name's Arthur, and they recognise you. You know, you start from the secretary, go all the way through, uh, you know, because I always find the secretary is the most important person in the company. If, you, if the secretary is on your side, okay, you're laughing, okay? The rest of it is quite easy, actually, to be honest with you. Is there anyone that you particularly want to sit with at the dinner that you've been talking to that might be um, good to... No, no favourites at all. <laughs> okay. Is it that lady who's going to dress up? For you? Well, yeah. <laughs> I wasn't going to mention that. <laughs> 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 I'm glad you brought that up. <laughs> 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 We've heard you. Yeah, all right, all right, all right. <laughs> She's bought a new dress for you, haven't she? Well, yeah, it's supposed to be something like um, Liz Hurley dress, okay? Oh. With, with um, long splits and, right. and pins <laughs> and all that. Good. Yeah. So, how do you keep your motivation going? Look at you, you're popping. How do you keep it like that? Um, the simple reason, OK, I've got the desire to win, all right? And that's it. OK, and I say, yeah, I've done a good job. Now for the next one, because you're only as good as the last event. Oh, I'm quite tired. It's just um, one thing after the other. But I think it's coming together, OK? I mean, I'm pretty calm about it all. It's just um, making sure everyone knows what they're doing and, uh, and keeping on top and wondering what I've forgotten. <laughs> Well, Kate's doing all the guest things, all the guest table plans and all the rest, so I've sort of been hovering after she's gone home and making changes and all the rest. I'm sure it'll be fine. It's just the control freak in me coming out. I used to be much worse than what I am now. I've learnt to um, delegate a bit more and, and uh, know that people are going to do the job OK. Uh, I don't have to do everything. It's just little things like giving Arthur responsibility and giving David and some of the others um, tasks to do that um, we should be right. To build a good team like Pamela's, identify everyone's strengths and then delegate. It's important to give out clear roles and responsibilities when you're dealing with such a volume of tasks and then to trust people and give them space to carry their jobs out. It's also important to keep the energy and fun levels up especially when everyone's working under pressure. Pamela needs to communicate. Her, one of the many skills that she needs, okay, is to communicate. Right? Communicate not only with me, okay, but communicate with clients, communicate with other members of staff, okay, either above her or below her, or on, on the same wavelength as her. Um, she also got to be polite at all times, even when she's stressful, all right, which she is. Um, she needs to always give people information and to keep everybody in the loop. Okay, I know that probably underneath communication, but she needs to keep everybody in the loop. Hello, could I speak to Jane Vernon, please? Back to the Caldwell oh, hello, problem. Kelly. Is Jane there, please? Yeah. Um, that was oh, okay. It's Pamela here, Kelly from Enterprise. Oh, I do. <laughs> but it's a big surprise. <laughs> oh, okay. Well, I mean, they're in the top ten. Plus, they are receiving a, a regional award. It is. It looked very good for the um, company. And, you know, there's an amount of media there and quite an interest in the whole thing. So, um, because they are getting two, they'll sort of, you know, be in the eyes. Yeah. I, I certainly hope somebody can. <laughs> Fantastic. <laughs> OK, can you let Jane know that I've called her back then? OK. Thank you. Bye. Yay. Well, no, they still haven't come out of their meeting, but they wanted to know where they were in, in the top 100. And Have you told them? No. Told they said they're, they're in the top 10 and they are regional winners, so... Might be worth the while turning it's up. It's really good for the company if they're there. Yeah. She goes, you've sold me. 
<laughs> I can't sell anything. <laughs> good, I won't have to change the script again. Uh, that would be good. Do you think it'll be alright? I think they'll send somebody. It's the second time they've pulled out, so... I don't know if they're just shy or what. Um, so let's just have a look at the hotel. Hard work is unavoidable when you're organising a high-profile event like this to a deadline. Pamela's used to it now. I think people really work to their best ability when the deadline is approaching, whether it's an event we're holding or whether it, it is a publishing deadline, a copy deadline, when everything has to be at the printer. The closer you get to that deadline, the more frantic everything in the business becomes. But people, people like deadlines in publishing. You do get used to it. It's a bit of a shock when you start in the publishing business. You know, when deadlines do come up and everything, everybody works long hours and very, very hard. Okay, and she needs it now. My hours have been long the last week or so. And I'm a morning person, not a night person. So I prefer to start early, and I've been doing sort of 12, 13 hour days last week. Um, I need to get my dress right for tomorrow, <laughs> tonight, which I've put off every night this week because I've been so tired. But um, tonight, I think we're all in place. There's one thing that's bothering me that's not been done that may cause a late night. Tomorrow I'll come in early again, go to the hotel first thing. Um, and I guess just go on adrenaline. And I'm going to Amsterdam for the weekend, so I'll relax then. <laughs> the hotel, very minor point, but they're saying that um, we didn't say that we were going to use our own, or hire our own table in them, rather than theirs. Because we could get it cheaper. But I've got in writing, fortunately, that I said that we would do that. Do you want to meet now? Do you want to meet now with Arthur? It took me, it took me a long time. I mean, Pam's only been with us since January, but it, it took me a little while to work out what was the best way to manage her because she will um, float around seeming quite calm and in control of everything. I do keep my cool, and I do appear probably too laconic sometimes, which can make people feel a bit uneasy if they're thinking, why isn't she more? wound up about this. I am wound up inside, but I don't think I show it, so... That's just her way of dealing with life. She will have, I'm sure, many a sleepless night and early morning trying to work things through and sort them out. And I think perhaps the only, um, the only real failing I've seen on her behalf is not shouting in time if she's stressed or needs some support. So uh, it's a question of trying to give her the space she needs to do her job because she's quite independent about that, but also keeping a watchful eye on what's going on and um, moving in as and when required to help her out or give her extra resources. So um, yes, yeah, she's probably extremely stressed at the moment. Running an event with a strict deadline is tough. Pamela has contingency plans for every eventuality, which allows her to keep a cool head. To get through, you need to be enthusiastic, keep your stamina up, and get help if everything's running away with you. Will all the planning and preparation be enough to pull the evening together? Pedro's waiting desperately for these tablecloths because he's got his staff turning up, well, they're here now, to set everything up. So we'll just put him back, which we don't want to do. They're coming in with the uh, centerpieces because people doing the flowers are supplying this navy. Um, velvet tablecloths. Yeah. And I can't get hold of them now. Kate, Pam, do you have Seam Trader's phone number? Well, what time are they meant to be here? Yeah, they're not here, no, and it's holding things up for. Yeah. Yeah. Can you bring another, um, another one of those spreadsheets to the tables? One, A clean two, one for two, one, Graham? Two. Yeah. Great. Stage left, stage left, Mike. Stage right. Stage left, stage right. Yeah, name tags. Stage left, left, the name left. tags. Yeah, great. Thank you. Bye. Oh, I was just talking to your people. Oh, great. Yes, yeah, sorry, I'm a bit late. Yep, urgent. A bit lost in here, yes. Oh, did you? Completely. We're, okay. Yes. Yeah. Have you got gear downstairs? Yeah, we've got some of the stuff up here. We're bringing it up just now. Okay. So, do you want me to? Oh, 
wasn't worried, but I just thought, hmm, maybe they got the wrong day. Wasn't that the only thing that the hotel were providing? Well, we wanted to provide them because I was quite specific about what I wanted on the table. And they checked. Got one more thing. Yeah. Have you got the menus? Yes. Printed, can I see one? Yeah, sure. And tonight is for all of us to recognise and applaud that. Let's take a look at some of the trends in this year's survey. It's never too early or too late to be an entrepreneur, or at least that's what I want to believe because I'm sure I've got a good idea in me somewhere. Well, it's um, five to five, so the rehearsal is late. We should have done that at least an hour ago, but um, so Deborah and Juliet are a bit nervous about that, but it'll be fine, I hope. Nope, seriously, the youngest entrepreneur in the list is 28, and the oldest has been eligible to collect a pension for some years. So, Karen, you and David, you look after the top 100. David, you look after um, Yellow Pages. Right. And we want to know when the, um, Richard Duggarby is here. Yeah. He's the key one. And He's Sarah Tyne. Yeah, they're yeah? the main two. Yeah. Three young sectors of the UK economy are clearly leading the way. Over 50% of the 100 are in the telecommunications, computing, and pharmaceutical sectors continuing the trend away from the manufacturing areas towards service-related industries. But engineering, retail and construction are also represented in what appears to have been a very good year for British business, uh, British enterprise. Everything's OK, but... Can I just not bother the orders? Yes. I mean, all these guys have to iron their shirts yet. I and I have to come do down my makeup. Real and Karen has to do her makeup. What about mine? And David has to iron my dress. <laughs> Dream on. Yeah. <laughs> Women entrepreneurs are also on the increase, up 50% on 1998. You got the suit? Yes. Oh, you look nice. Good. You won't want to touch you. <laughs> okay. Where's Deborah? She's in there. Oh, I didn't see her. Um, in the next one down, they're doing a rehearsal. Yeah. yeah? Entrepreneurs all have one thing in common. Watch your face. Ah, no, that's what we need to train to do. Hello. Hi, how are you? Yeah. All right, thank you. Good. I think you're doing the commentary. <laughs> Here we are, we've we arrived are. at last. See ya. Bye. That's the pine room that we're talking about. So, is that going to be okay to take photos on? Um, I think it's going to be very packed, isn't it? How many people it, are you going to have in there? Well, it's a moving um, kind of ball game. <laughs> Time to get changed. Downstairs, the first guests are arriving. I agree. I think it's going to be a bit packed. I mean, and personally, I don't think that's a very good backdrop. That's brilliant. So KPMG, if they want some special photo shoots, I think we should take them there because it looks it will look good. What's that lighting like? Uh, well, that will catch a reflection off anything, won't well, it? Yeah, because it's curved it's, and it's shiny. Yeah. So, yeah. Not good? No, I'm a bit kind of lost what to do, I must say. OK. <laughs> I think maybe we'd, we'd drag people out. And like we were saying the other day, what about these Yeah, I was couches? just about to go and have a look. That's what I was just doing when you stopped me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Last, the champagne is flowing, but will everybody turn up? Loads of people haven't turned up. Is that right? Well, not loads, but like four or five people on one table haven't turned up, so they couldn't. We never had a ta we never had eight people no. from one group. No, never. No. We had a, a bit of a, a nightmare for a, an event organizer, and that eight people turned up, and we didn't have places for them. Well, we did, but they didn't want to sit apart. They wanted to sit together, so... Their name, their name had disappeared into oblivion. Yes. Hello and good evening, and welcome to the third annual Enterprise 100 Entrepreneurs. Before we reveal who they are, though, I'm delighted to be able to welcome to the platform this evening Patricia Hewitt, the Minister for Small Business and E-Commerce.
Martin, thank you very much indeed. It's a great pleasure to be here this evening. I think the whole day itself has gone well. It's a bit so I'm disappointed about what you're not to do with the, how the flow is going now. So, as far as the day running, I'm quite happy. Twelve years ago, they were local car dealers in Stoke-on-Trent. Today, they run the largest mobile pho the phone distributor in Europe. They are John and Brian Cordwell of Cordwell Group. Now, they can't be here tonight, but I'm delighted to welcome on stage Richard Bosson, Operations Director of the Caldwell Group, to collect. The Caldwells did send someone relief all round. And so we come to the 1999 Entrepreneur of the Year. Is Mark Dixon, Executive Chairman of Regis. <laughs> What are the qualities you think that make a good entrepreneur? You've got to be persistent. You must never, ever give up. That's the first thing. Then you need to you need to be able to listen to others. And when you're listening, recruit good people. So listen to people, get the right team around you. So otherwise you won't build a successful business. And then you need to have the, a little bit of creativity to get yourself a plan. And those three things, a uh, bit of luck. You've got to be lucky. That's a quality, but not quite a quality, but you need some luck. With all that, you'll go far. It's been a long day. Yeah, it's gone well. I'm feeling really happy now. I'm smiling. But it had its own stressful moments, like the people who turned up, they didn't have a table, and we're quite drunk. And we ended up getting the hotel to make them leave. And the people that pulled out during the week, you can see now why I was so anxious, because there were too many um, not available, so we'll get that better next time. The sponsors seem happy, and I'm pleased about that. So now we've got coverage tomorrow, hopefully, in the media. See how that goes. Entrepreneurs are often the architects of grand ventures and big business success. But all good businesses need good managers to keep them working well. People like Pamela. It was a great party. But what did Pamela do to turn it into such a success? And what can we learn about managing an event like this? Firstly, Great planning and attention to detail is vital, but you've still got to keep your eye on the bigger picture, so it's a bit of a balancing act between the two. Secondly, great teamwork is absolutely critical. Effective communication and good delegation go a long way towards building a great team. Also, you must be the kind of person who has a positive appetite for hard work under pressure. And finally, You've got to be able to learn from your experience and apply it next year. I've learned so much this year, you know, so many things that will be improved for next time. And that's the only frustrating thing now is I oh, wish, wish I'd done that differently and all the rest. I would say Pamela is incredibly cool. I mean, she and I are both from the same country. We're both New Zealanders. And I think, I think a lot of us Kiwis do keep cool under sometimes very, very difficult circumstances. 